have 30 minutes. I am going to uh, do my best to work within that time. I need to work within that time. Praise the Lord. It is such an honor to be here with us today. Uh, right from Kabale, we send our love to those who are watching online. Daddy and Mommy would have loved to be here with us today. But they are serving where they are. I was with them the other day and uh, I know they will be watching this. So we love you, Daddy and Mommy. Let's give a shout out to them. Hallelujah. Uh, I am going to, in a very special way, send a shout out to Chris. <laughs> He has not been around for uh, the past three years. <laughs> we love you, love. <laughs> we love you, and it is so beautiful to have you in our midst. Okay. Friend of mine, Edgar, you came all the way from Kampala. It's such an honor. Yeah, we love you. I want to say a very special thank you. I don't know if that's blessing I see, but blessing, we love you also. Thank you for coming all the way from Barara. Blessing in your Yeah. For all the teachers of the children that have been doing awesome things up here. And everybody that took a minute to impart whatever into the lives of these children. Thank you. You are doing the work for the kingdom. This is the next generation. That we long to see of change, of power, of leaders, of presidents, whatever. So that they can grow up in the knowledge and in the fear of God is an awesome thing. So thank you, everyone who has helped with, with putting this together. Also to the children, they have probably moved out, but still, I believe the message will reach them. And any other child that might still be in our midst right now. Titus 2.15 says, Speak these things, exhort them, rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. Let no one despise you. So, there, there is a treasure inside of you. And beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. Tell your neighbor we are not ignorantly worshiping God. And I don't care whether you think you don't know him or whether you feel you don't know him. We are not doing anything out of ignorance. That could have been in the past but not from this moment. Verse 24 says, 
God that made the world and all things therein. Ruhango wa hanjire nsinevi ntubiyo nevirimu. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Ahabgo kuba mukama wei grunesi. Tatu ula omuhe karu. Ezombe chigwe ne mikono. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Nobu kwa kuba okere zibuga e mikono ya vantu. Nko ine echi ache nide. Aha kuba ni wewe nka aha avantubona. Amagara no miso. Nabulichi ntuchona. Okay. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Kandi akhanga amhanga gona agavantu na bakomora omumuntome ngu atule omunsiona niwe ya tandichireho obunaku wenyaka oku 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 Oktaho enyat oktaho enyata no yahu abantu batuire. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after Him. Gubabone okshera rohanga niba 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 andanjira ve ine amasko go go kumugwaho nobu alave atali hale no muntuwe na omuli itwe. And find Him, though He be not far. From every one of us. Aha kuba omuli omuliwe tuva abahulire tujenda kandi tugumaho. Our completeness in God. Obgijurira nebgitu omuli mukama. What does it mean to be complete in God? Nichimanyi sachik shanga ojowire omuli mukama. What do we understand when we talk about completeness to begin with? Praza kutandi kanechi nochenga chitwa gamba okubo wile. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, let's rush there very first. Bibi ne gambo mwakoli nso waka wele shura ya kashatu. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Abakoli nso waka wele shura ya kashatu. I'm waiting for the projector. The Bible says, He is not far from us. I know it can feel that way many times. As though He is a mystery that we don't understand. Or rather, that we cannot understand. The word is true. Because God is the word. And he says he is not far from us. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some others epistles? of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you ni mujirangu twatandika twatandika kugaruka kwe nalishi ni twete ha zok zoksim zoksimisa ezimuhandi chigwe nali ezihandi chigwe nali ezimuhandi chire koku abandi be betanga i am going to i'm going to read then you will we'll follow with the ruchiga afterwards in the interest of time Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy hearts, tables of, of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who has also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the law, but of the Spirit. For the law killeth, but the Spirit gives life. 
written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Shula Kabiri, Imwe Mwenka ni Imwe Ebaruha Yoksima, Ehandi Chigwe Omiti Mayanyu, Eri Kumanywa Kandi Ekashonga Avantuvona, Kandi Nimuleve Kamuli Ebaruha Ya Kristo, Eyi Ya Tuhandi Chisize, Eta Handi Chigwe Nabginu, Kule Kanomo Yowaruhanga Ohulire, Hatali Ha, Habishate Bia Mavale, Kule Ka Aha, Ahambali Zemiti Mayanyu, the assurance that we have in him that there is no place of lack there is no place of lack that we could ever reach in him you can imagine uh, a king with all his majesty he laid all that aside and thought about a Joshua, a peace, a Gloria, an Esther, a name it, your name, put your name. And said, let me be all of this shame, let me be this poverty, let me become all this insufficiency, so that when they come, they will walk in the completeness that I have set. And said, this is not dependent on the amount of money we have in our pocket. It's not even dependent on the kind of house you stay in. Or the kind of education you attained. This goes beyond that into an intrinsic God becoming what we could have been. So that we might become his glory, we might become the manifestation of his very being today. And follow me. It is follow me. It is not about what we do. It is about what he did. Because in our own, we could never, we could never be able to, to bring life to ourselves, to give ourselves the everlasting, the eternal kind of life that we need, we, that God has called us to. That is why his word says, Beyond the law. Because the law kills. It reminds us of our insufficiency. It reminds us of how we fail every time we try. It, it sets the bar up here that we cannot even begin to attain it. How thankful we are of God for his love. Because he said it is finished and it was. What is left is us walking in that knowledge. Because in him, we live and move and have our being. Again, Acts chapter 17 and verse 17. For in him we live and move and have our being. A certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Okay. 
We are also his children. We are also what he made from himself. We have his very DNA. His very blood. His very spirit flowing through us. That's what it means to be his offspring. So now think about everything that God is. Is he all powerful? Is he wealthy? Is he loved? Is he kind? All those things that God is, we are. And we can never walk in it if we don't understand this truth. We need to come from the place where we try to do things in our own might. And get to the place where we honor the sacrifice he made for us. What I mean by honor the sacrifice he made is work with him. Work with him by letting him work through us. Because we can get to those moments, get to those places because where we tend to fall to our human strength. See where that gets us. And he is inviting us to the place of oneness with him. To the place of intimacy with him. To the place of let his spirit lives this very life for us. The, 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 the schools we go to, the students we teach, even the tomatoes we sell in the market, doing that in the revelation of the fact that his spirit is dwelling in us. Ladies and gentlemen, when we understand this, you will know you are not called to an ordinary life. I am not saying this to excite us. I am saying this because it is the truth that we need to know. That when we walk into the different places that God has called us to walk into, we will, know, we will walk knowing that we are his very offspring. But do you know what it means to be a child of God? Okay, you can relate with being a child of your parents. Because whether you're 60 years here, you once were a child. Before you were 60 years, you were a child of a parent. You were a child. Whether you, you lost your parents as a, a child growing up or whether you grew up with them, there is that place of identity that you are assured of when you know you belong to somebody. Regardless of what anybody tells you. Like now you can't come and even if you paid me how much, you can't tell me I am not my parents' child. You can try to convince me. But I you can try to lie to me but nothing you ever say could ever take that away from me why? because I know it I know it because I grew up with them they were telling me this is daddy, this is mommy 
no human being in whichever dignity or caliber can tell me otherwise. So what about God? This is the same kind of oneness God wants us to have with him. Of like see him and see you. His very nature, his very power. His very goodness, his very kindness, his nature. You see, the issue is that we don't know it. That is why we could be comfortable in poverty. That's why we could allow to live a complacent life. That's why we can allow the devil to tell us you're sick and we allow. Or that you're weak. Certain places are not for you. You didn't get the education from Gayaza or whatever. No offense, I love those schools. You, the devil would lie to you that it is you, 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 for you you didn't grow up from the other family. So certain things are not for you. That is deception. That is deception and we do wrong. We have to believe it. He is inviting us today by the knowledge of his word to know that he has called us to greatness. That you can do whatever you do with a place, with a place of, of revelation, knowledge, and understanding Him. So that if you are a child, you will be the best child ever. So that if you are a husband, you will be the best husband ever. If you are a wife, the best wife ever. If you sell beads in the market, tomatoes, or sweep the road, whatever it is you do. What will make the difference is the place of revelation of knowledge that you have in God. Because it is not as small as depending on the things that we see. He has gone beyond that. He thought of generations. In that one act of his goodness on the cross. He for your children, their children, and their children's children forever. That as long as we can trace our roots to him, then you know you are called to wealth. Then you know that you are a God where you are. Then you walk in authority. And in the glory that we are meant to manifest for him. Now don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. I'm not saying that uh, be proud. I don't even know what, what that would look like. <laughs> I don't know what that would look like. But if you walk in the revelation of truth, because remember his word says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? So the revelation of who truth, who he is, then you cannot walk in sin. Whatever you do, you can't do in pride. It is impossible. That same way it is unlike God to hate you. It is the same way it is unlike us to hate our neighbor. We walk in pride. Or any sin whatsoever it is, name it. 
He took away that incorruptible nature of ours and placed his very own clothed in glory. Walk in that knowledge. Ephesians chapter 1. That point is our inheritance is in him. Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to start from verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all the saints, See, Cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That you may receive the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that um, ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. That which is his body and the fullness of him that filleth all in all. I started by telling us we ought to be one in him, complete in him. Every scripture, everything that I am reading about God and about Christ, I am showing us that that is exactly how he wants you to see yourself. He did not just create us so for him he can be up there and then we be down here in some different world separate from him. He created us so that we can be as him here. And in all his wonderfulness and vastness he gave us his word and his spirit so that we can live 
dwell in these things. So that we can walk this life knowing who we are meant to be. That so that that day when we stand before him, we are more than conqueror. We did what we ought to have done. Someone said, heaven is not for us. Heaven is for God. The earth is our. Uh, it's in Psalms, it's actually a scripture. But the man said, what, heaven is not yours. Why are you rushing to go there? That is to say the mindset with which we live. Let me just live this life and then I die and then I go to heaven. So why would we have accomplished as his children? What would he glory in as his children on earth, as his offspring? We would have left behind a world full of pain and hurt and lostness. Yet the very essence of him creating us was so we could have dominion over all those principalities. Was so we could minister love by being loved. Was so that we could shine his glory for men to see. Let all men see your good deeds that they will glorify the Father which is in heaven. If we live thinking that we are not anything, or rather that our neighbor is meant to be great on our behalf. How is this gospel going to be preached? I need, I'm inviting all of us today to understand that the essence of our being is to reign on this earth. Whatsoever goodness comes with reigning is what we are called to as his children. So walk into those different places that you go to every day. Knowing that you are called for something bigger than yourself. Whether you know it or whether you don't know whatever that is, it is there. And it is in the word. Dwell in the word. Every day you wake up, don't live a life apart from God. Waiting to meet him on Sunday. Or waiting to meet him when the preacher speaks. When the preacher speaks, it is supposed to be a confirmation of those things that you have already heard from God by yourself. Go the extra mile. Own a Bible if you don't have one. How else will you live? Because every single truth is embedded therein. Make it, a, make it your a lifestyle, a nature, your life, your daily doing. To abide in his presence. To abide in his word. He says he shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. If anybody deceived to you that your mind will be stayed on God if you do not have the word in you, well, that was a lie. Past writing notes in a service. 
Oh, handike not so much Past writing notes in a service, beyond writing oh, notes in a service. Ole njira kuhandika not so much Beyond listening to the word said of God. Ole njize tuze bigambe yagamba. Make it a habit to know God by yourself for yourself. Whether you're a child, whether you're a woman, whether you're a man. He has called you to greatness. And you will never know it if you don't know his word. You will never walk in it if you don't understand his word. And you will never understand his word if you don't read it and, and have it in your spirit. Grow the intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Make a habit of living your life in his presence. Wherever you are, whatever you do. This is the life that he has called us to. And an awesome friend of mine once said, no career is greater than the gospel. I couldn't agree more. There is nothing more important than those places that we share with God. Those places where we know God defines us and calls us his own. Those places will take you places. Those places will take you in greater depths in God. So that when your child is sick at home, you say the word and the enemy flees. So that when the business isn't working very well, you know you have it in you to change that. So that when you don't like whatever circumstance you're in, you know you have the power to change that. So that when you don't like in him we live, we move, and have our being. As long as we are believers. And if we are believers and we know it, we know that our, we have the same kind of faith that Christ has. That means nothing can fail us. That is true. And I hope we know it. We might not have known it before today, but from this moment on, you have the very life of Christ in you. That means you are big. Bigger than you even know. So walk out of this place today knowing that there is nothing in God that you want that you cannot have. Actually that you already have. Because he has given us all things. And he dwells in us. Understand that from the deepest part of your being. That is the way you will defeat the enemy. That, because he defeated him already. Any similitude of the enemy or the lies of the enemy in your life is the devil trying to check, do you know these things? And if we listen to that voice and accept, imagine what kind of power we are giving away. Because he is not powerful at all. See, he has made us more than conquerors. In Christ Jesus. There is nothing that can fail you. 
Not principalities, not the devil, not situations, nothing. But that is only as true as you believe it. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's walk in the knowledge of the goodness of God. Let us think about who good he is every single moment of our lives. Take a minute right now to thank God for the kind of person he has made you. And I don't care whatever is going on in your life, but God is bigger than all those things. And, and he is inviting you to a place to know that, to see that. And to work with him by letting him work through us. Take a minute to bask in that goodness of God. To speak to whatsoever situation, whatsoever it could have been. And say today is the last of its kind. From this moment on, I move as a child of God. In those things that he has called us to walk in. To show forth his light to the hearts of men. To be his glory and his crown here on earth. That we will not live ordinary lives because he has not called us to ordinariness. But that we will in the knowledge of the greatness that he has made us. Speak to yourself. Tell your spirit to believe it. And let nothing, let nothing steal that truth away from you. Speak to yourself. Speak to your heart, to your understanding. The places in you that need to listen to you. And tell that thing in you to know and to walk in the revelation of the knowledge of God. Every single moment from today on. That whatsoever comes in the future. Whatsoever could come in the future, it was finished. God finished it for us a thousand years ago when He died at Calvary. That there is a single day after today that you will walk apart from His presence. That we will walk, that we will dwell in His presence. All the days of our lives. Him in us and us in Him. He has called us to that knowledge of that. Continue to speak to whatever is in your life, whatsoever is going on with you. Continue to speak to that. In knowledge and in understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.